today on Be Something Wonderful. Knowing this, you will never look at 3D reality in the same way ever again. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. One of you commented on the channel that, that Abraham Hicks mentions that when you stop paying attention to something, when you stop putting your attention on something, that it literally disappears out of your experience. And then you said, but I haven't been able to prove that myself. And I just want to say here, guys, that this was a powerful statement by Abraham Hicks. Why? What's Abraham Hicks pointing to? Abraham Hicks is pointing to your attention as your light, as your conscious awareness, right? So when you say trying to prove your light is like, is like opening up the refrigerator, seeing the light on, and, and, and then closing it, and, and thinking, well, the light goes off, but I've got to prove it. And then you open it up and the light comes back on. Do you see that? It, trying, to, you're trying to prove that your attention, in other words, your light and consciousness, your awareness creates reality. It's like trying to prove that the refrigerator light goes off when you close the door. Because you are the light. And so, so, so when you take your attention off reality, in other words, when you close the refrigerator door, the light goes out. That's no longer, that light no longer exists. That reality no longer exists because you're not looking at it. Remember, you, when you look at reality, you're looking as reality. When you're looking at that light, you're looking as that light. So when you close the refrigerator door, in other words, when you pull your attention or re, you would remove or retrieve your attention from a reality, it no longer exists. But as soon as you go to try to prove it, and you open up the refrigerator door, boom, the light comes on because you are the light. This is big. So Abraham Hicks, this is the statement. Abraham Hicks makes it seem like when you, what you stop paying attention to will literally disappear, but I haven't been able to prove it to myself yet. That's why. Because your attention is the light of consciousness, right? You are the light in the refrigerator. So when you close the door, when you take your attention off your reality or off a condition in 3D, it must disappear. It no longer has your light. But as soon as you go to prove it and you open that refrigerator door or you put your light on reality, there it is. Because you're looking at reality as reality. You're looking at the light as the light, right? Trying to prove that your attention, in other words, your light and conscious awareness creates reality. It's like trying to prove that the refrigerator light shuts off when you close the door. Every time you open the refrigerator door to look, there it is again on, right? You're looking at your light as your light. Powerful opening. Let's unpack this a little bit more. Here you are. There's your attention, your consciousness, your awareness. You're like a lighthouse looking for its own light. Right? You're putting your light on things in 3D reality, looking for your own light. Can you see that? You're looking at reality as reality. You are looking for your light, not realizing that you are the source of light. Hear this. You're looking for it. You're opening up the refrigerator door looking for, to see that the light shuts off, not realizing you are the source of light. Right? You perceive the 3D world of conditions as separate from you. What you are looking for, you are looking with. That's why you think it's separate from you. You look at 3D reality as separate from you, but you're looking, what you're looking for, you're looking with. That's why you can never prove it or see it. The only way you can prove it is go within. Just like going within the refrigerator. Because <laughs> then you can see that you are the light. Right? That's the only place you can find it. Right? So let's unpack this a little bit more. What you focus your attention on attracts, creates, and manifests your reality. We, sometimes we, we, we get caught up in the processes, right? Like imagining, affirmations, meditations, whatever the processes are. are. And, and, and we come out of those processes, and then we go about our day, but we don't even pay attention, attention, where our attention is. Because that's what creates reality. Right? Those processes give you the experience of a desired end, of an imagined end, of a desire that you want to bring forth, that you want to call forth from the quantum field into your reality that you want to perceive. But reality is created in every moment 
Hear this, you're a reality generator with your attention. Wow. So that's why, if you're not seeing results, that's why, right? You're letting your attention get pulled either on the inner screen, as Vadim Zeland talks about, of your thoughts of why you don't have it, where is it, what's happening next, or the outer reality of the events that are happening. Right? What you focus your attention on, you assume and believe to be real. Right? You are light, you are source, you are consciousness, but you can't see who you really are because you're looking from that vantage point of who you really are. You can't see the light, you can't prove that the light shuts off in the refrigerator, that you are that light because you're seeing from that vantage point. Right? You can't look at and as something to prove who you really are. There's the refrigerator, there's you, right? You must go within, like the light that goes, okay, that goes on as you look, right? That's a very happy refrigerator. <laughs> All right, let's get this. You literally illuminate the world with your light or, or attention. That's what Abraham Hicks was pointing at, brilliant. Right? The, the, the beauty of Abraham Hicks' teachings are they are simple. They are, they are they're brilliant, brilliantly simple, right? Because that's what reality is. It is simple. Reality creation is simple, right? This is big. And the moment you are not looking at something, your attention, it no longer exists. The moment you're not looking, the moment you're not, you shut that refrigerator door, that light's off. It no longer exists. But as soon as you open the refrigerator, the light's back on it. The moment you close the refrigerator door, the light goes off. That's the moment that you're not looking with your light, right? But the moment you try to prove it, by opening the refrigerator, the light comes back on. You are like a lighthouse looking for your own light, right? It exists by your attention to it and ceases to exist when you remove your attention from it. This is the same with your wish fulfilled or your desired end. Right? If you, if, you, if you do a state akin to sleep and you imagine your fulfilled wish, you, the way you stay in fulfillment is keep your attention on it. Keep your light on that, that, that fulfilled state, that imagined end. That's what we're talking about, right? Attention determines what you perceive, receive as real and as your reality. Do you hear this, guys? Your attention determines what you perceive and receive as reality, as real or your reality. Wow, big opening today. Let's hit it a little bit more. The more you focus your attention on something, the more real it gets. This is the power of attention, right? But what is imagining, right, that Neville Goddard talks about? Imagining is really putting, concentrating, focusing effortlessly your attention on your desired end, on your imagined life, on your, on your ideal version of yourself. That's what Neville's talking about. Right? We have some quotes from Neville that, that we'll point to later, but more important, that this means whatever you're putting your attention on, it's more important, it's more interested, you're more interested in it, and it becomes more solid. It, it becomes more important, it becomes more interested, it becomes more solid. You are fascinated with it, right? You have some thoughts. This is how it starts, right? You have some thoughts. Then you attract more like thoughts as you, as you focus, as you concentrate on those thoughts, as you imagine your wish fulfilled. Then that, those thoughts get together and they become a truth. You see that as true. You see that as reality, like your wish fulfilled. And then that does become your reality. Do you see the progression here? Right? That's really what beliefs are. What, what the law of assumption is. You believe it is true. You feel it is true. You feel it as reality. That's what you mean by, we mean by that truth. And it becomes your reality. Thoughts you put your attention on often attract like thoughts and emotions. Becoming a belief that you feel strongly about. Those beliefs then become more real and you view them as truth. And that truth becomes your reality. Wow, that's big, right? If you want certain thoughts related emotions to disappear, stop putting your attention on them. In other words, resisting or desiring them and they will dissolve or vice versa. If you want certain thoughts or certain emotions to turn into a reality, put your attention on them, right? But, but without resistance, right? Without the needing it or wanting it, right? This is the idea. That's how you feel. You, you feel any emotion, right? You feel it and then you let it go, right? If it, and so this is how you create reality. So let's, let's unpack this a little bit more. Your attention and awareness is not confined to space and time. That's the power that we're talking about. It, it transcends time and space because time and space are, 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 not, are illusions. 
So you, it, go, it can go anywhere and everywhere in all time. We're pointing to the holographic nature again of the universe, the non-locality of the universe, that, that in every part contains the whole and that holds everywhere. This is the same with your awareness and your attention. Unwanted realities are created by not making it your own, by not making your attention your own. Who owns your attention? That's the question, right? Where is my attention now? Where do I want my attention to be, where, right? Where would I love it to be? Those are the questions you got to ask yourself, right? To be aware, to get to that awareness center. You allow it to be captured by the people, events, and conditions of the 3D world. And you're moved unconsciously by the desires and resistances. Yeah, you're either, you're either immersed in the 3D world events and conditions of people, or you're immersed in inner thought thinking about, I really got to have this, or maybe I won't get it. I'm thoughts of doubt and fear, right? And other, thi and, and, and other things, maybe you're preoccupied with what's going on at work or, or, or with some friends. Whatever it is, you're either in the inner screen of thought or the outer screen of the 3D world. You want to be in the center within, right? That's really what most meditation techniques do, right? They focus your attention on something or nothing. All meditation techniques can be really drilled down to the simplicity that it's about where you put your attention. Some techniques, you put your attention on an object or your breathing, right? Other techniques, you put it on nothing and just let your thoughts float and go away. Either way, it's to, it's to, it's to let your thoughts just be there without you identifying with them, without you making them real. That's what they all are. Focus your attention. And this is the beauty. Whatever you, method you use, whether you're focusing on nothing, but really nothing is something in infinity. There is no nothing. Nothing is something, right? But when you focus your attention on nothing or on something, breathing or whatever, it brings you back to the present moment. It merges any split energy you have or split, in other words, energy is attention. Attention is energy. Any split attention you have leaves your thoughts to do their own thing, right? You let the thoughts do their own thing. You don't identify with them. You don't judge them. You don't try to change them. You don't try to control them. And this brings you to the all-powerful now. That's what nearly all meditation methods are based on. That's powerful. So let's unpack this a little bit more. And here's what Neville Goddard chimes in here with some beautiful beautiful viewpoints. He says, man is only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. There you go from Neville, directly pointing to awareness or attention and the poverty of imagination. Because what is imagination? It's imagining, it's where you're putting your attention within on an inner desire or something that you want or, or desire. That's what we're talking about here, right? Weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. He goes on to say the great secret, he calls this the great secret, is controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention. Again, bringing imagination and attention together because what is imagination? It's your inner attention. Where are you putting your attention inwardly? right? Where, what are you imagining, right? Firmly and repeatedly focused on the object to be accomplished. This is what he, he calls this the great secret, is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention. Firmly and repeatedly focused on the object accomplished, your wish fulfilled, right? The objective world, he calls it the objective world, but we talked about there's not even really an objective world. We believe the 3D reality is the objective world, but we debunk that, right? But the objective world vanishes. It has to. If it vanishes, then it's not real. It's not really objective, is it? Right? So the objective world vanishes as we turn our attention from it. There, he directly hits attention. He, 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 now, we're, now he's pointing at what Abraham Hicks was talking about. Right? The objective world vanishes as we turn our attention from it. Why? Because there is no objective world. Objective means real. Objective means it's still there when we're not looking but it doesn't, it vanishes, so it's not there. This is the, the light in the refrigerator, right? It means that holding the attention upon the idea of the wish fulfilled until it fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas of consciousness. Here he goes directly, these two quotes directly pointing to you where your attention is. This means holding your attention on the idea of wish fulfilled until it fills your mind and crowds out all other ideas of consciousness. Wow. 
Neville got it here, unpacking attention for us, right? You, you will never look at attention the same again, guys. So let's unpack this a little bit more. So here's what we're talking about. This really comes from the teachings of Vadim Zelin, who wrote Reality Transurfing. Uh, this is in his other book. Um, so he, what he talks about is that our attention is either on the inner screen. Remember, he, he's using the movie analogy, right? That the screen of the 3D world is that, is that movie screen, right? So you're, it's either on the inner screen, you're lost in thought, and you're acting unconsciously. This is when you become on autopilot. You start making up things in your mind, and then you act irrationally right? Or you act without being consciously aware of it. Or it's on the outer screen. You're preoccupied with outer conditions. And you're also reacting unconsciously. You forget yourself and you act refle reflexively, right? Either way, you're lost. You're, you're asleep in, waking, in the waking dream. He calls 3D reality the waking dream. You're asleep in the waking dream. You think you're awake, but you're dreaming unless you're in the awareness center. Right? When you're either immersed in either the inner screen or outer screen, your attention's not your own. You have no control and you're immersed in the waking dream. You don't have control because you're, when you're lost in thought, you're acting unconsciously, you're acting on autopilot. Those sometimes are good for habits that we have that we don't want that we, that we to put on autopilot right? Some good habits, right? But most of the time, it's better, really all the time, it's better to be consciously aware, be in the center. And then you, then you can select, choose where you put your attention or the reality you're creating, or you're reacting unconsciously. You're preoccupied with outer conditions and you react to them, right? You forget yourself, right? Yeah, I don't know what got into me, right? You can find yourself saying that. That's when you act reflexively, right? To, so how do you wake up? What does Vadim suggest? He says to wake up, you shift your, to your awareness center. And, and the question is, guys, here's the question you got to ask yourself, where is my attention now? And then where would I like it to be? Those are the questions. Where do I want it to be? Where would I like it to be? Where would I desire it to be? Where is it now? In the awareness center, you can observe your thoughts, your inner screen, and what's happening out there on the outer screen. You can see both screens when you're in that center. And that's simply waking up and saying, where am I now? Where's my attention? Who am I and where am I? <laughs> Those are good questions, right? So, so here it is. Now this is it. So this is where you're in your awareness center, and these are the dotted lines representing that you that you've got you've got both screens in mind, right? You've got the inner screen of thoughts in your inner world and the outer world, the 3D conditions. You see them both, but you're not identified with either. You're not immersed in either. Now you're taking actions from that center, right? You see and or look at reality now as reality as the observer. Right? It's almost like getting in the refrigerator. <laughs> right? You are both inside and outside the refrigerator. Here we are. I see my light. This is the fridge is very happy here. Why? Because it knows that, that, that it sees both inside and outside at the same time. Right? It, 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 it knows when it opens the door that the light's on. And it knows when it closes the door the light's off. In other words, it knows when it looks at reality as reality. It's creating it. And when it retrieves its attention from it, when it removes its attention from it, it's no longer in its experience. It's no longer reality. That's how you prove it, by going within. Resting in the center is resting in wish fulfilled. I really want to hit this, right? Resting in that awareness center, right, uh, is resting in your wish fulfilled. Keeping that wish fulfilled, that's fulfillment, right? You're now in the center, right? I see myself and I see reality. That's what Vadim Zeeland mentions to to also say to yourself, right? You can ask yourself, where is your attention? Where would you like, to, where would I like my attention to be? And also I see myself and I see reality to remind you that you're creating it in every moment. That, that's what guys, this is why knowing this, you will never look at 3D reality <laughs> in the same way ever again. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like our videos, share them on your, uh, with friends and family and the channel, on your social media, with your friends and family. You can follow us at Facebook at Be Something Wonderful, on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, our website 
at tomcaron.com or besomethingwonderful.com. Or you can write me anytime at info at besomethingwonderful.com. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, with great love and great light, this is Tom. See you soon.